Okay, today we're beginning work in the geometry book. How about that? Chapter 1, Lesson 1. We're going to look at points, lines, and planes. And this is our content standard for today and our mathematical practices. We're going to model and we're going to attend to precision, which means actually to communicate with the proper vocabulary. So let's move forward. Previously, we've used basic geometric concepts and properties to solve problems. We know about uh, finding the area and the perimeter of, and of circles or circumference, um, rectangles, triangles, all that kind of thing. Now we're going to identify and model points, lines, and planes. And we're going to identify intersecting lines and planes. This is a pretty simple lesson. I think you'll enjoy this. We do have some new vocabulary. Undefined term. That's sort of different. How do you write a definition for something that's undefined? And they're considered undefined because they're only explained by using examples and descriptions. So that is a point line and a plane. They're considered uh, undefined terms. We've got a point, line, and a plane. Collinear, that means that points that lie on the same line. Coplanar, can you guess what that would be? Good job, points that lie on the same plane. There's intersections, so place, places where they intersect. Definition, a defined term, space. Okay, so let's look at some of these undefined terms. Notice that none of these have a, a particular size or shape. They don't have any actual size. A point is a location, and so it's denoted by a capital letter. Okay, so point A doesn't have shape or size, and it's undefined. You can just describe it by a letter or, uh, or drawing a picture of what it looks like. Um, a line, it's made up of points and it has no thickness, so this line is not thick. It doesn't have a width, and there's exactly one. Now this phrase, exactly one, means one and only one. So whenever you see this in uh, mathematics, exactly one means one and only one line through any two points. Now you'd name a line by naming the two points or sometimes it's labeled uh, with its own little script letter. So we can refer to this as line M or PQ or line PQ or QP or line QP. Notice the notation. When you draw the notation it has an arrow on both sides. That's extremely important. I want you to remember that. So we call it line M, line PQ, line PQ, or you can write the word line QP or the symbol line QP. Okay? Very important. You'll get counted off if you're not using the proper notation. And then there's a plane. A plane is just a flat surface made up of points that extends infinitely in one direction or any direction, all directions. So if you think of a table as a plane, it, it has certain shape and size, but the plane that we're talking about in geometry, it just continues going on forever and ever, just like a line does. There is exactly one plane, which means one and only one plane, through any three points not on the same line. So we can name this plane by the script letter K, so we can call it plane K, or we can call it BCD, plane BCD, or plane CBD, or plane... DCB or a plane DBC or a plane CBD or a plane BDC. It doesn't matter what order you put those three points, but you have to write the word plane in front of it, okay? Now, for me, if they're asking you to name it by point, you have to list all three points or just list plane K. That makes it oh, so much simpler. Now we're going to name lines and planes. We're going to practice this a little bit. So they've given us a figure and they've asked us to name a line that contains point K. Well, we've got all kinds of choices. Um, we've also got the notation. Notice that we're using proper notation. And it takes two points to name a line. I want to say that again. It takes two points to name any line. So make sure that you have two points listed. And they can be in all kinds of orders. Notice they go JK or JL. They, both of those lines contain point K. You can go KJ or KL. So start from the middle and go out. Or you can start from this end, LJ or LK. Either way, any one of these are correct. Now they want us to use the figure to name a plane containing point L. 
So we're naming the plane, so it's plane B, or we can use the letters of any three non-collinear. So we can't name it using these three because they lie on the same line. The points have to be non-collinear. So that's why we name it JKM or KLM or JLM. M is included because it does not fall on that line. It's non-collinear and that's needed to name that plane. So two of, the line, two of the points can be on the same line, but the other point must be not on that line. It must be non-collinear. And they list all the letters, the ways that you can name it. There are actually 15 different three-letter names for this plane. Time to check your progress. So use the figure to name a line containing the point X. So pause for a moment and then go back and study this. Good job. The choices that they give us, line C is the only choice. Z is not a line. X, it takes more than um, two points to name that line. Um, and then Y, Z, that's not the line. So you see why those others don't work. How about this one? Use the figure to name a plane containing point Z. And the easiest way to name this and the, from the choices are plain P. Very good. So let's look. X, Y, nope, it takes three points to name a plane, so that's not enough. Plain C, nope, that's naming the line. And plain X, Q, Y, nope, they are collinear. It takes the one that's non-collinear to name the plane, so that's why the other three do not work. Okay, let's look at a real-world example. We are to name the geometric shape modeled by a 10 by 12 patio. So think of a patio. Would that be a point line or a plane? That's a toughie. Models a plane, doesn't it? Flat surface. How about what's the geometric shape modeled by a button on a table? You got that one. That's a point on a plane, isn't it? A button lying on a table is a point on a plane. All right, let's go on. Time to check your progress. Name the geometric shape modeled by a colored dot on a map used to mark the location of a city. That was tough, wasn't it? A point. Good job. Next, name the geometric shape modeled by the ceiling of your classroom. Yep, that's a plane for sure. It's a flat surface, isn't it? Oh, now we get to draw geometric figures. Okay, draw and label a figure for the following situation. Plane R. So start thinking about what a plane looks like. Yep, that's that flat surface. And we're going to label it R. And it contains line A, B, and D, E. Okay, we can do that. Which intersect at point P. Oh, interesting. So we don't have parallel lines. We've got some intersecting lines. Add point C on plane R so that it is not collinear with a line AB or line DE. So, we're going to draw a surface to represent the plane R. We're going to label that. Now, we're going to pick anywhere on this plane to draw a line. We're going to draw that line and we're going to put points AB on it. Okay? So we got dots on that line for point A and point B because that's what the first one says to do. Next, we're going to draw a line that intersects line AB. And it doesn't have to be perpendicular, but that one definitely intersects. And can you remember the points that we need to put on that one? Yeah, we need to put a D and an E on that one, so we're going to label it. Now the next thing, which intersect at point P. So right there they intersect, and now we're going to label it as a P, point P. Now we're to add point C on plane R, so now we have to put another point on there. There we go. And it cannot be collinear. It can't lie on this line, and it cannot lie on this line. Very good. So we drew a dot for point C in plane R, such that it will not lie on AB or line DE. Very good. Now we're giving us another one to try. try. Um, draw and label a figure for the following situation. We have line QR and it's on a coordinate plane. Okay, so we know, know we're going to have to draw a coordinate plane and so we're going to have to plot point Q at negative 2, 4 and we're going to plot QR at 
4, negative 4. Um, draw and label a figure. For, okay, and so we know we're drawing a line. So we're going to have to put a line through that. And we're going to add point T so that it's collinear. So T has to fall on this line somewhere. I, I would put it where it intersects because you have to figure out what the point is. So you want it where it's at a crossways. And it looks like it crosses the x-axis right there. So that would be a good point to choose. Okay, 1, 0. Excellent. Now time to check your progress. Which one of these lines would work as a diagram for what they're telling you? So pause for a moment and pick out your diagram. Okay, answer B. Because look at this one. Uh, it says plane D contains line A, M, and T. Well, plane D on this one, it's not containing line A. It intersects. Okay, so that's why that one's thrown out. Now these others all have AMT, AMT, AMT. Okay, so that's good. They all intersect at point Z. There, there, oops, F. Okay, so that's why D is thrown out. So now we're just looking at these two. And then it says point F is on plane D and is not collinear. Here F is collinear, here F is not. So that's why B is your solution. Good job those of you that chose B. Now we're to draw and label a figure for each relationship. Okay, so we've got line BA on a coordinate plane. How about you take just a moment to write these down? Note uh, the important information that's in this word problem, because when I go to the next slide so that you can actually look and choose, you're going to lose this information. So make a quick note, so pause it, make a quick note that your way you're ready for the next slide. Okay, so we're told that B is at negative 3, 2. So negative 3, 2 negative 3, 2, whoa, negative 2, 3. So C is out, negative 2, negative 3, up. C and D are both out. So we're looking at A or B. A is 3, 2, okay, 3, 2. And we're also told that M is on plane, okay, M is on the plane, but we're also told that it's collinear. That one's not falling on that line. So A is our choice. Good job. How many planes appear in this figure? Now don't just look at the blue plane that they've drawn. You're going to pick up other planes. Remember it takes three non-collinear points to name a plane. So we have this plane S. But what about this plane formed by ABC? See that triangle standing up? If you look at the face of that, isn't that a plane also? Yeah, so there's two planes. There's plane S and there's plane ABC. So just because it's not drawn in, don't forget to look at that. Three points that are not on the same line make that plane. Name three points that are collinear. Well, notice this. A, B, and C aren't collinear, but A, B, D are collinear. They lie on the same line. Good job, those of you that got that one. Let's try another one. Our points A, B, C, D, A, B, C, and D, are they coplanar? Well, they all lie on plane A, B, C, so they are coplanar. Good job. A, B, D are on the same line, and then C is an, uh, the third point, not on that same line, but in the same plane. So they are coplanar. Good job. Okay, at what point do D, line DB and line CA intersect? Line DB, and remember that line continues on, DB and CA. Did you pick point A? Well, if you did, good job. Awesome. Okay, now for you to check your progress. How many planes appear in this figure? Remember, not just looking at the blue plane. You said to your right, we have plane T, and we have the plane made up by A, B, R, X. Excellent. Name three points that are collinear. And there's a multitude of choices that you can name, but you've got to go from these selections. Are B, O, X collinear? No. 
How about X, O, N? No. How about R, O, B? Hmm. How about A, X, Z? Yeah, A, X, Z are collinear. So you have to understand what that word means. They lie on the same line. How about the next one? R points X, O, R, coplanar. X, O, R, are they coplanar? Yes, they do lie on the same plane. We're not going to name the plane by that, but yes, X, O, R do definitely lie in the same plane. They lie in plane T. Okay, final one. At what point do line BN and line XO intercept? Line BN and XO, at what point do they intersect? Yes, at point R. Very good job. Okay, you guys are ready to begin the exercises.